And so would I be right that, uh, Courtney, you mentioned there that you don't think there's any sort of independent effects on lipids uh, at this stage with with uh, early time-restricted eating. You can correct me if I heard that wrong. But my, my read is that it does seem fairly consistent, or at least it's been reproduced a number of times, your study. And then I read a study, I think the first author was Robert Jones. That was a 2020 paper that looked at early time-restricted eating and insulin sensitivity. And then there was a, another study by Parr that I think was an Australian group, again, saw some improvements in glycemic control does that appear to be the kind of metabolic, the, the, the most reproducible metabolic benefit of time-restricted eating independent of weight loss? And second part of that question, how does the early time-restricted eating compare to kind of later time-restricted eating if we're talking about, say, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. versus midday to 8 p.m., which I think a lot of people who are doing intermittent fasting are, are kind of that's their their protocol um do we know how those compare in terms of insulin sensitivity and, and glycemic control yeah absolutely so I, I would say for early time restricted eating the most um common result people find is an improvement in glycemic control and it's something like 75 percent of all studies on early time restricted eating find an improvement in some aspects of glycemic control and you know, my lab did it with an oral glucose tolerance test. Other labs used other sophisticated procedures, but it's nice that different scientists using different methods have come to the same result. I'll say the second most common thing that we see, although it's not measured in a lot of study, studies, are improvements in blood pressure. And there have been some really elegant studies done in rodents where they find that when they eat earlier in the day, they actually excrete extra sodium and that in turn lowers their blood pressure. Um, and so we think those are the most kind of the most common benefits. Um, now, most studies on time restricted eating haven't looked at early time restricted eating. They've looked at, you know, time restricted eating by skipping breakfast or just eating a little bit later in the day. Like Emily mentioned earlier, eating breakfast a little later, dinner a little earlier. Um, to my knowledge, there have been three studies comparing early versus later time restricted eating. So the one that Emily mentioned earlier. Earlier, I think it was a one week long study in 15 men, and they found by and large there were improvements in glycemic control in um, both the early and what they called delayed time restricted eating. So, this was time restricted eating by, by skipping breakfast. And I think there was one, I think it was maybe fasting glucose that was a little better in the early time restricted eating group, but by and large the benefits were really similar. Uh, more recently, there was a study out of Japan in 90 adults comparing early versus sort of middle of the day time restricted eating. So in this study, they were comparing, I think it was 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. versus 11, um, starting after 11 and then ending eight hours earlier. It was a five week study. And in this study, they found early time restricted eating was better than both the control condition and uh, midday time restricted eating for weight loss insulin sensitivity, um, the diversity of bacteria in your gut, and then also for lowering inflammation. So they kind of had a ranking where early time restricted eating was better than midday time restricted eating, which was better than kind of eating throughout mm -hmm. the day. When, when you say early time restricted eating and you talk about 8 a.m., I just want to kind of get clear on something. Do any of these studies uh, collect data to understand the average time that people wake up and therefore, when that first meal is, how distant that is from, from actually rolling out of bed. Are these people rolling out of bed and yes. they having their first bite straight away or is it a little bit delayed? Depends on the study. We measure it in all of our studies. And we when we say early time-restricted eating, we usually define that as eating within a 10-hour period that ends before about 5 p.m. Um, all of our studies have been eight, six or eight-hour windows. Um, and we've always required our participants to start eating within one to two hours of waking up mm -hmm. or we've given them, given them a fixed schedule, but it depends a lot on the mm -hmm. study. So there's no negative effect yeah. on glycemic control. For example, if you start that window, as soon as you wake up, I'm just thinking with regards to where melatonin, cortisol, other hormones are, do you need to allow a certain amount of time and get light exposure before your body is geared up or are you kind of ready to go and, and you're getting optimal glycemic control straight away? Yeah, so great question. So um, 
the original data from the 1990s, we have Ed Van Cotter did a series of studies where she literally infused glucose just straight into people for 30 hours and looked at their blood sugar control. And she found even at 6 a.m. in the morning, they had better blood sugar control than later in the day or when they were sleeping. That said, you know, it wasn't a large study. And what we now know is about half of people have a genetic mutation in their melatonin receptors. And it take in those individuals who have a certain mutation, it takes a little longer for mel melatonin levels to fall in the morning. So my suspicion is in, in some individuals, it's better to get bright light exposure before you start eating. Mm -hmm. So maybe wait more like an hour or two after eating. But um, I don't think we have a super clear answer on this yet. Yeah. And, and in all of our studies where we let individuals choose when they want to eat, they generally choose nine to seven or the latest we see is 10 to eight, sometimes eight to six. Um, but people usually don't go to an extreme. And I don't think there are any studies out there that have compared saying eight to four versus nine to five. Is that really a significant difference? And I, I, I doubt that it would be. I think the general idea is that you're eating when you're active and when you're awake. Sure. And sometimes when you do these 12 to eight things and you might be someone who's up and going at 6 a.m., that's where you really try to see some negative benefit, some negative effects of having it that much later in the day. But if you're someone who wakes up at 10 or 11 in the morning, which there are people that have circadian mutations that wake up mm -hmm. later, then yeah, I wouldn't tell those people to try to wake up early to eat, you know, like they should fit to their body. So I think the general rule we like to think of is like, wait at least an hour after you wake up and stop eating at least three or four hours before you go to bed and then figure out what works for you. And if you're in that kind of zone, I don't think there's a huge difference between, you know, one hour earlier or one hour mm -hmm. later. So in some ways early is kind of relative to your sleep cycle and, and when you wake up. Yeah. And I think one of the problems is that for people that might have to wake up very early to commute, um, maybe they have to wake up at five or 6 a.m. Maybe like I know school teachers sometimes have very early start times. They're forcing themselves to wake up very early. They're not even hungry yet. Melatonin is definitely still high and then they're forcing themselves to eat. I think that's where you get a problem with early mm -hmm. eating. Whereas if they gave the body a chance to wake up a little first before they ate, it would probably serve them a lot better. Sure. It does seem though that the majority of people, at least that, that I know who are doing in, intermittent fasting, are doing it from midday to 8 p.m. So it would seem that in, in theory at least, shifting that a little bit towards the earlier part of the day could be beneficial. But then the question uh, that, that follows is adherence and how would that be something that someone could implement into their lifestyle and for example if you're shifting your dinner from 8 p.m down to 5 p.m is that something that you can do socially does that work with your family etc and i'm sure that's something that both of you have have thought about yeah and in our we in our recent study we did a pretty extreme schedule so to speak we tried um a 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. schedule and fast for the rest of the day. It's actually really interesting. We asked people at the end of the study, what do you what do you plan to do in the long term? And the control group, almost no one wanted to do the early time restricted eating. And about a quarter of people wanted to do time restricted eating by eating in the middle of the day. Um, and I was actually surprised more people in the control group didn't want to try time restricted eating. But, you know, that's the data. Um, but among the people in the early time restricted eating group, we found 40% of them wanted to continue time restricted eating and early time restricted eating in some shape or form. So we're finding that once people try it, a significant, obviously this is not a majority of people, but a significant number of people want to continue with it. Mm -hmm. And in our particular study, we found benefits for mood. And so we're thinking, because they didn't know, you know, that they were, that they were getting any extra weight loss benefit while they're in this study, but obviously you can sense how you feel it. Mm. And our participants reported having higher energy levels and less fatigue and fewer feelings of depression and de dejection. Um, and so we think there may be some benefits that might be appropriate for someone. Now, I doubt half the po U.S. population is going to want to do early time restricted eating. So I always tell people, you know, this is really the million dollar question in the field. Mm.